Welcome on in Dragonfolk. My name is Alex, and today we are talking about some great new additions to many classes in our beloved commoner format of Flesh and Blood. We spoke about the great new equipment and some weapons in our last video, so today let's take a look at the action cards each class and talent got from Dusk Till Dawn. I'll rate each section from what I believe for to be worst to best based on my own personal opinion, so feel free to give me your take in the comments below. Anyway, Let's get right into it. Let's first take a look at Light Illusionist. Prism got a ton of super awesome commons here, and each one has its own insane amount of power for being a common. Let's take a look at Celestial Resolve first. Celestial Resolve is a zero cost instant for Light Illusionists that will give an attack action with Herald in its name, plus five, plus four, or plus three defense based on each color. The reason I'm putting this at a low position is simply because blocking a ton of damage from one attack isn't normally the meta at the moment. This is a great tech for Guardians and Brutes, but I'm not sure how much play it's going to see. Maybe just two reds for those possible matchups. Next, let's take a look at Celestial Reprimand. Celestial Reprimand works much like Blinding Beam, except it's free. It will make a card defending an attack with Herald in its name get minus three, two, or one, respectively, and that is pretty good if you need to get around poppers. But there aren't too many decks that run a ton of poppers besides brutes and guardians, so it is just best to skip this one unless you have a popper-heavy meta at your locals. Up next is Angelic Descent. Now, this is a banger of a card. While the buff to Angel Power doesn't do much for us here in Commoner, the first part of this text is huge, being able to give our Herald cards go again much like Luminara's Celestial Fury would, except for a cool zero resources. Running blues and yellows of this really gives you a huge advantage to keep your heralds going and going and going. Finally, my personal favorite Light Illusionist card in Commoner is Angelic Wrath. This is a pump unlike any other. This should have at least cost one resource, but now you're telling me I can give my herald card that already comes in for seven an additional four power for zero resources at instant speed? LSS, what were you thinking? This is for sure an auto-include into every Prism deck in Commoner. Can we also just take a moment to say that each of the cards in this list here are zero cost instant speed cards? Huge upgrade for Prism through and through. The next list we have is for Light Warrior cards. Now, I don't play too much Light Warrior, so excuse my lack of knowledge as we go through these and rate them from worst to best. At number 4, we have Light the Way. I cannot believe how bad this one is, if I'm being entirely honest. You can charge a card to play this, and if it was a yellow card, when this hits, it gets go again. That is way, way, way too many clauses for an upside for a zero-cost three-attack action. Definitely a skip for me. Next at number three is Glaring Impact. Costs one and attacks for four, three, and two, depending on the color. You can charge when you play this, and if you charged a yellow card, this gains overpower, which is much like Dominate, except it gets rid of the From Hand Clause, which means that they can happily block with a D-React with no issues whatsoever. Seems like a lot, but Bolton does some shenanigans, so I guess this could close a game if the opponent isn't paying attention. Number two is Charge of the Light Brigade. No, not that Charge of the Light Brigade. This Charge of the Light Brigade. A zero-cost action that pumps the next attack you charge is pretty good. Gets the Bolton trigger and extra damage isn't terrible. That's all I gotta say on that. Number one for Light Warrior is definitely going to be Resounding Courage, though. A Light Warrior attack reaction that pumps a Light Warrior attack, which includes weapons, for one resource is super awesome. But what's more important is that if you've charged, you get to make a Courage token, which is also a huge help to Bolton's game, because the small pump that Courage token will give is going to make that soul of yours put in more and more work. Rounding out the light side is the light actions, of course. I'm going to have the same gripe with the shadow actions further on down the road, but my number four and three picks are at the bottom because of how incredibly situational they are. In a light versus shadow cube, the cards seem fun. Outside of that, absolutely not going to see any play. Number four is Break of Dawn. For zero, you can prevent damage from a shadow source only. You see what I mean when I say situational? 
number three is much like that, but the reason that it has a spot above Break of Dawn is because it's a zero for four, which is the rate I like my cards. I'm talking about Defender of Daybreak, and specifically the red, because why play anything else? This card gets a buff when it defends a shadow attack, but its attack value is much more important here. Number two is Blistering Assault. Blistering Assault is also fairly situational, but you're due to have a few yellow cards in your light deck, so it does at least make some sense. A little expensive at two resources for five, four, or three attack respectively, but the ability to possibly get go again doesn't seem impossible, which makes it stand at its number two spot. Number one in the light section is Searing Ray. Now, while Searing Ray is a one for four, three, or two attack, giving it a plus two buff if you have a yellow in pitch can turn the tides in your favor if you end your combo with this. I'd personally only run the red since it can potentially come in for six, but to each their own. Now let's deep dive into the shadows. Starting with the shadow brute cards, we are hoping to get some great support for Levia. At number four, we have Battlefield Breaker, a three cost for seven, six, or five power with the clause that if you banished a card with six or more this turn, it gets a measly plus one additional power. Doesn't seem like a huge payoff for the cost, so that's why it's at number four. Sick art, though. Number three is Tribute to Demolition. This tribute begins a set of cards that help Levia really not die to blood debt, which is awesome. Being able to banish a six from hand will turn off Blood Debt for herself and still allow for a lot of damage. Tribute to Demolition is a 2 cost, 6, 5, or 4 power, and blocks for 3. Not only does this let Leviah banish from hand, but if a card with 6 or more was banished that way, Tribute to Demolition gains plus 2 power. This is a nice cheap closer, and I had a hard time choosing between this and our next pick as the number 3 spot, so maybe you can tell me if I'm correct in my knowledge of power for Brute cards. Number two is Tribute to the Legions of Doom. One hell of a long name for a card. As you can see, the only difference between this and Tribute to Demolition is the fact that the power of each color is upscaled by one in Legions of Doom, and it costs one more resource. The reason I chose this is because with Demolition, only one out of the three cards is a six or higher attack, whereas with Doom, two out of the three cards are six or higher. So it helps a lot with the cost basis for the effects that each of these tributes have. Number one for the Shadow Brutes is Shade and Swing. Shade and Swing is a super cheap popper that costs one resource and allows for Leviah to banish from hand just like the tributes. With the reds and the yellows being over six power and it still being able to block for three, this is a card that is going to for sure be a staple in the Shadow Root lists. Moving on to the Shadow Runeblade. Now, I had a hard time figuring out what to rate these cards because in most situations, they are fairly okay. Not a ton of rune chant creation in common or with the loss of Mavrin Skies or Mordred Tide, but it is still possible with Vincent's new weapon, as well as Read the Runes and Bloodspill Invocation. All four of the common cards in Shadow Runeblade have something to do with Runegate, the new mechanic in Flesh and Blood, letting you play cards from the Banish Zone as long as you control rune chance greater than or equal to the cost of the Runegate card, and you get to play them for free, mind you. Number four is going to be Putrid Stirrings. The reason Putrid Stirrings is at number four is because while it is a non-attack action and can be played from the Banish Zone without needing to Runegate, the effect only affects Runegate cards, being able to pump them for 5, 4, or 3 attack respectively. And with there being only 3 other Runegate cards in Commoner, spoilers, it's going to be very situational to get this buff out to them. Number 3 is Vantam Banshee. Vantam Banshee is a 3 cost, 7, 6, or 5 attack card with Runegate. Not a bad card, but you need 3 rune chance to play this from the Banished Zone, and sometimes three is just not happening in Commoner. Number two is Rift Skitter. Rift Skitter also costs three and comes in for four, three, or two attack. On top of that, this has Runegate, meaning it could be played for free, and gets Go Again. Go Again is huge in Commoner, and being able to present a zero for four with Go Again and still play something strong, like a Vantam Banshee from hand, is really nice. 
Again, it is a little difficult to get three rune chants in commoner at most times, but if read the runes is going to help you out anywhere, this is the time for it to help you out. In the number one spot for Shadow Runeblade commons is Vantum Wraith. Vantum Wraith is a lot like Vantum Banshee, except much like the tributes in the Shadow Root category, it costs one less and has one less power on each color. The reason I put Wraith in the top spot as opposed to Banshee is because two rune chants seems a bit more reasonable to make in commoner than three. That's it. That's my reason. You can fight me in the comments about it. And finally, we come to the shadow actions of Dusk Till Dawn. The shadow talent commons in Dusk Till Dawn follow a bit of the same path as the light talent cards, in which a couple are very specific against opposing talents and nothing really else. Starting with number four is Soul Butcher. Soul Butcher is a two cost, six, five, or four attack, and it blocks two, with the ability that if a defending hero has one or more cards in their soul, this gets plus two attack. The only heroes that care about soul are Bolton and Prism. So therefore, this card is better suited for something like a Light First Shadow Cube as opposed to Commoner. The same goes for our number three spot, Soul Cleaver. Soul Cleaver has the same stats as Soul Butcher. It just gets go again instead of a buff if the defending hero has cards in their soul. Again, it's Light vs. Shadow stuff. Number two is an interesting one called Tear Through the Portal. Tear costs zero and blocks for two. Its ability allows you to choose a card of Tear's specific color in your Banish Zone and give it go again until the end of the turn. This can be very powerful in those fully red or blue decks, but in most cases with Shadow Heroes, you see a mix of colors. So the chance that you get the specific Tear for a specific card in the Banish Zone is less likely, but go again is huge, so that's why it's at number two. Number one is by far such a huge bonus to Shadow Heroes simply because it's a non-attack action and it costs zero. The number one slot for Shadow cards goes to Beseech the Demigod. Beseech reads, choose an attack action card in your Banish Zone. It gets plus three, two, or one attack until the end of turn. Being able to pump your cards in Banished is huge and will also help with things like Vincent's ability to make a rune chant damage unable to be prevented. Definitely an add to any deck that can access their Banished Zone for future use. <coughs> Shadow Runeblade. This concludes our overview of every common card to come out in Dustal Dawn. I hope that my insight has helped give you a little bit of understanding into my ranking system and I hope you were playing along at home. Let me know how you would rank these common actions in the comments below, and more importantly, tell me how you feel Dust Till Dawn did in regards to switching up the meta of Commoner. Thank you all so much for watching, and don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed content like this. Make sure to stay humble, and I'll catch you all later. Nerd out.